Hey guys, welcome to Strong with Raj. No nonsense strength training. As you can see, I am quite comfortable in the deep squat position. But what I wanted to highlight in this video is that the hinge position. See, I'm touching my lower back. I was talking on the live video. The hinge position, which is the start position of deadlift, bending over like that one, is what hurts my sacroiliac joint, my lower back joint. It is very helpful for me to look back into my videos and see what was happening. So I can do a deep squat, sit and talk for a number of minutes, no problems. But hinge position is something that is really challenging from last few months. Hence why my session bench press and deadlift at the garage turned more into a yoga and stretching uh, session. <laughs> Uh, this video is 25 minutes long towards the last 10 minutes. I think it's my stretches. I will leave you guys with some music. So definitely not talking for that long. So the pain um, doesn't go away as easily. And uh, definitely there is relief. I should say temporary relief. This position also helps me. This one. And also downward dog. Maybe I need to get back fully into yoga and do more classes kind of a thing every day. Yeah, so these stretches do help me get through my lifting sessions if they are painful. And if I don't do them, I don't think I'll be able to go through the deadlift. So at least it is letting me do some deadlifts thanks to yoga and stretches that, that are there. So I don't like to get into too much of analysis. I think I do it just enough. And... Um, find my own ways to manage the pain so bench press what a breeze no worries i do bench press more for uh, my warm-ups to my deadlifts to be honest and i think it worked okay so i went up to 80 95 kg bench press and my left arm was a little slower so i i stopped at that but going back to the stretches that I do, um, I was not always a big fan of stretches anyway. Uh, I do understand the logic and science behind passive stretching after workout, which I think it is good. But it is almost a movement-oriented thing. It is not just to feel painless, uh, but that is what I am doing. I am doing more of a dynamic stretching before the workouts all and only reason for that is just to make my pain go away and stiffness go away in my left sacroiliac joint. Nothing else. Otherwise, I would just do my warm-up with my exercise. If it's squat, I will just do squat, light squats and work up to my number. Uh, but because of this pain, I have sort of uh, started doing this where I'll just do some stretches. I must say I don't mind doing them. Once again, I'm in the squat position here and no problems totally comfortable and i could be here for at least five minutes easily and push it really if i have to for 10 minutes so i wonder what is happening when i'm in hinge position and for a long time i was uh, in sort of wrong thinking that it was my lower back my lumbar uh, but it is not found out it is sacroiliac joint and I think it's quite common in, in people uh, with or without lifting. So I was just talking to people online while I was doing live. So I have heard myself talking and, and I thought I gave myself <laughs> good insights. So that is a wonderful thing about recording your workouts, I believe. Other than that, I think I had the music on and uh, I was just slowly going through my workout there are days and times when i have enough time so i don't rush anything and pain definitely teaches you how to slow it down that's that's i've maintained that pain is a great teacher there is a reason why it is there in our body in our anatomy in our psychology for perhaps as long as we have existed for it to have there in our body so universally and by that I mean everyone feels pain. Uh, there would have to be some 
use of it some significant role that it plays and logically you would say it is there to keep us safe and to stop us from doing silly things and hence um, preserve the life so that way it may sound philosophical but it does give me a little bit of uh, i suppose clarity and acceptance whenever i am going through the pain so here is the deadlift and uh, again watching my videos has helped me to see from the front at least how much i am wincing and grimacing in my deadlifts and they are nothing they are not even 150 60 kg i think so what i have done recently is started doing some romanian deadlift there is a whole host of what i call them a supplemental lifting or supplemental movement I think they should not be confused for accessory movement. A supplemental movement is the movement which looks very similar to the lift that you are doing. So Romanian deadlift is a supplemental lift. It is not an accessory lift. A barbell row will be accessory because it is not similar to deadlift. So Romanian deadlift, you start from the top where actually deadlift ends and lower it down keeping it very close and in contact with your thighs. You go below the knees and not below much more than. So I did Romanian deadlift and went only as low as my pain would allow. Whenever I start hurting, I would stop at that. So that will be my plan to start doing some supplemental exercises, lifts and Romanian deadlift are on top of the list. Uh, along with that, look at that. I have to keep doing this in between my sets. It just, the pain comes and doing these uh, stretches have proven to be very helpful. I've been doing this for a while, so I exactly know what to do. Uh, yeah, I think um, I, I definitely have to start doing Romanian deadlift a lot more, very light, light deadlifts. And also when I feel like doing something heavy, I'll just do rack pulls. Rack pull is also in a, supplementary lift where the bar is on a rack much higher than where the deadlift would be i suppose just an inch below the top of the patella and it it can be it should be heavy so i'll do singles or doubles at least it'll make me happy that i'm doing something heavy and uh, once again where the bar will be positioned is exactly at the point where I will not feel the pain and exactly, you know, uh, just touching the point where it will be hurting. So I have to be very careful. Once again, more stretches with the bin this time. I don't know what my neighbors might have been thinking, what I was doing to the bin, but uh, it was helping. Uh, I would just keep my lower back stretched, my SI joint stretched, moving, go do my set. Do it again. So this is 150. And this part, the lowering to get the bar is when it hurts and then the whole thing. When it is over the knees, no problem. Look at my face. Just the journey from the start to the top of the patella is where it hurts. And, you know, 150 was not even a warm weight for me at one point. But that's what pain can do. So I did several reps. This is the same weight. And my face is just... Yeah, that has been some learning about how my face, uh, my facial expressions uh, in reaction to the pain. So like I said, I uh, it became more of a yoga and a stretching session because I was not going to push too much with my deadlift. And I took this opportunity to do some stretches, some static holds, some twisting positions. And I was enjoying it. It was a nice sunny day. And even though it's winters here in Brisbane, after a few reps, you're so hot. So no shirt was a good idea. So uh, guys, I hope you do get something out of my suffering <laughs> that is happening because of the SI joint pain and also my left shoulder blade. But um, I remain positive. And uh, I remain um, unrelenting to journal these things, to talk about it in my videos and give it to you and present it to you and offer it to you. It might be useful for someone. 
to not just battle through the pain but to manage it on everyday basis there is no winning or losing or battling the pain or no you just have to manage it the best you can and the best way to manage is to keep moving remember movement is medicine motion is lotion that's what i've learned anyway guys i will pop in some nice calming music and i will see you next time Mm-hmm.
Thank <laughs> you. 